I am not emotionally very open. No, I'm not. But, but I don't think it's a, a crime. Uh, control is very important to me. Uh, you grow up black in the American South in the late 40s and the 50s, you have no control. Uh, white uh, segregation is laws tell you where to go to school, which bus you can ride on, where you can ride on the bus, which taxis to take, what you can say. Um, your life is proscribed. And then in the 60s, what we call the American Black Social Revolution, then you had black ideologues trying to tell me what to do. And so I'm all the time, I am saying to myself, hey, when do I get to decide what I want to do? And so I've always been sort of fiercely protective with anyone of my wanting to do and to control my life as I saw fit. Do you find uh, yourself intolerant of other people's lack of control? I know when, when you were the Davis yes. Cup with McEnroe, who of course is famous, uh, we all actually almost look forward to his tantrums. But John is that hard to take uh, for you? Intellectually, no, because people are frail. Uh, everybody has frailties, but they don't have all the same frailties. What I would dearly like, and what I liked in McEnroe, McEnroe had the emotional freedom to be a bad boy. I never had that emotional freedom. If I had been like that, I am convinced the tennis world would have drummed me out of it. You, you, because of the era or because of your race? Because of my race. And my race wouldn't allow me to be like that. And I wouldn't want to be like that. Uh, we are absolutely, in fact, when, when I started in the 50s and early 60s, my tennis coach literally told all of his young black kids that if the white junior tennis tournament directors could find any reason to kick you out, they would. So you had to be beyond reproach uh, growing up in the South. And so when I see John going off half-cocked and fully cocked sometimes, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, very, I, I'm both at the same time, I'm very irritated at him and I'm envious because I would like to do the same thing, but I don't, I don't feel I have that luxury. I had that luxury. It hasn't been very long that you've, um, since you made your announcement that you had AIDS. So since it was a secret up until then, right. except from the few people who knew. Uh, I imagine, am I right, that in, in the States at any rate, you didn't probably have an, have an opportunity or, or a need to meet with other AIDS patients because you were keeping your secret. No, um, that's right. Although I was certainly aware of it. Every Christmas, uh, I take, last three or four Christmases, I've taken my daughter, Camera after all the celebrations. This is around five in the afternoon, and we go up to a couple of hospitals in, in Harlem, the black section of, of New York City, um, uh, and we take um, some of her new toys and some old toys and, and give them to the kids in the uh, children's ward of, of uh, the two hospitals. And uh, invariably, the last three Christmases, um, Quite a few of the children in the, in the uh, ward there at both hospitals had AIDS. This Christmas, uh, when we make the same trip, camera will know that those children have AIDS. But I, I, I certainly fight any self-pity. Uh, I don't uh, want it from anyone. Uh, I, too, am not afraid of dying. Uh, I also remember um, a minister once saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, I think it's rather typical of quite a few people who are AIDS patients or, or people who may be terminally ill with other diseases and, and saying that truthfully, which people who are healthy find difficult to believe that they're not afraid to die, but I genuinely am not, uh, and I say that sort of uh, not being self-effacing or anything. Uh, it doesn't scare me too much. I wondered that when your, your active career as a tennis player right. came to an end because of your heart disease, uh, was that, what was that like? Um, it, it wasn't very traumatic for me at all, I don't think. Because uh, I never wanted to think of myself as an athlete or a tennis player. Why? What did you think of yourself well, as? Well, again, one of the biggest problems in America for athletes, especially black athletes, is that they will define their own sense of self-worth 
their own self-image in terms of how well they are at athletics. And if you do that, and you're only an athlete for a certain length of time, you're going to have monstrous problems later. So even before I had to retire, I always said, and, and this is not a slap at, 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 at Wimbledon, but I said, I don't want to be remembered in the final analysis for having won Wimbledon. I mean, that, mm. what good does that do anybody? Uh, Yes, I won Wimbledon once. Uh, Billie Jean's won 20 Wimbledon titles. <laughs> She's yes. got 20 times more reason uh, to be happy about that. But that is a, a wonderful, well-earned, uh, and I take applause for having done it, but it is not the most important thing in my life. Not, not even close. No. Uh, although, I, I, it's not a slap at Wimbledon. Mm. I, I'm, I, I'm a, I love Wimbledon. It's, it's done a lot for me. I enjoy coming over here, but that's, that's not the uh, end all of everything. The people watching this tonight, what have you got to say to them? Uh, well, apropos of this show, that uh, there's always hope. And you must uh, live your life as if there is or there will be some hope. Um, and that hope should not be a selfish hope. That is, the, for me, the hope is that maybe there is no cure for AIDS in time for me, but certainly for everybody else. And uh, that should be sufficient enough to uh, maintain this hope. Ladies and gentlemen, Arthur Ashe.